1000 problem solve with elite code shirt. Can you believe it, man? Oh yeah. Okay. So like, yeah. So solving a thousand elite code problems, getting a elite code t-shirt, um, started here. What with like 63 days of elite code, a max streak of six days based. We got again, 70 days again, no, no consistency. Got my job in 2020 and I didn't need to do any elite code at all. I don't even know what happened here. I guess maybe I was getting sick of my job after after one month, or maybe I was just doing it with coworkers. I have no idea. That's kind of a weird thing, right? To see a lot of leak code here, or maybe there was like some kind of competition or something. I don't know. But then the company is basically empty. My least active day. Then 2021 was the day I decided to leave my job. I live streamed all of this in 2022, about three years ago. Did it every single day, um, every single day almost, and then we kind of like slacken and then got our offer and then gave up again. But today marks the biggest. Quit my job, did some leak code just to maintain, and then we went ham today. I feel like a dozen on sites. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, I like. I, I would say that a lot of people are. At least for me, I feel like. And one thing I I, I have I fell into this trap. So maybe maybe it's just me. But the behavioral questions, I didn't realize how much harder behavioral questions are. Like just the whole interview process is way harder. You need better behavioral stories. You need to answer your questions better and and you also need to answer the technical questions better so like it's like both so like you can be on an on-site and they'll ask you you know they'll ask you for your elevator pitch so it's like reframing your elevator pitch so it's like actually good or better answering the behavioral questions that they answer you that they ask you right it's like a lot of stuff and then not even to mention it's the technical portion so if your leak code sucks and you don't answer the question that they ask and they're asking maybe slightly harder questions now than they used to um yeah if you don't have any of those then you don't get the job that's in my opinion, right? I, I feel like it's a lot. I feel like just the both are harder. And when I say behavioral, is that like, they'll ask you something like, um, like what makes you want to work here? And if your answer is wrong, like you can't just say, oh, I, I just love the company. Like they're going to say that's a red flag and they're not going to move forward. The number one thing in basically in this journey has been like the lead code problems are really hard. Um, rabbit hole, rabbit hole is really deep. They're like, essentially that there's really hard lead code problems. Um, two, I think most people fail because of most people aren't like disciplined enough. I don't even think it's about motivation. I think it's just discipline. Um, three that, um, you essentially get like this, you reach like template code. Um, a lot of patterns become like second nature. Um, you get faster at reading problems. And then I think you also see like, like in real life slash, you know, applicable situations. Okay. Have you looked at? The OA Obez had? No, I didn't. I don't think I did. Yusin Ali Adan. What's up? Do you pass all your coding review interviews now? I have a similar profile for you, but some reason I still fail some. Yeah, I think I, um, I fail some, but like, it's kind of weird because the ones I fail are, it's directly related to like probably not doing enough mock interviews that essentially like there are interviewers that like will really screw me up. Um, that is just not like a leak code problem. So like I can under, I can solve any algorithm problem that's in an interview easily, easily. But there are interviewers that take a different, take different styles and different approaches to interviews. And that really screws me up. It really screws me up. So like uh, to give like an actual example, right? Like there are interviewers that like, there's lots of interviewers. There's a lot of different types and they, yeah, they all kind of like do their own thing. But there's like this one type, like there's like the talkative one and they love helping you and asking your thoughts on things and like, and like, yeah, basically talking and asking like, what, what are you thinking here? What are you thinking here? What are you thinking here? Um, there's like the silent ones. They never say a word. These two people were the ones that I saw, like basically before this, like this, like cluster, I think, or the ones that I really kind of noted, which is that just talkative ones and silent ones. Um, but like, there's like a third one that I'm realizing or that I'm seeing that are really tripping me. And these are like, like, I would call them like tricky, like tricky, tricky interviewers. And these are the ones that they'll test your knowledge, like ask questions, like to explicitly test your knowledge or see like kind of how you'll react. And then there's ones that will like add second guessing too. So like, like maybe tricky part two, like the second, the second guesser. And so they'll ask you stuff like, are you sure you want to do this? And so with these, it's like, I'm solving a leak code problem, but I have someone who's not actually helping me. And they're not also being like a, a passive observer, but they're also they're What they're trying to do is, is gauge information to see if you're a qualified candidate. 
and they'll see they'll test your confidence level um in in how sure you are about your solution and yeah for me that is tricky and i like it could they could give me an easy problem but like if they throw a wrench into it, then then yeah, yeah. So those are let, that's my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. Yeah, silent are the worst. Uh, silent ones are the are the people that are getting forced to do like three to four hours a week of interviews. Probably I'm okay with silent. Like I mean, I don't like at least like they're not actively like I don't really have to plan around anything. Like silent means it's just a leak good problem. Talkative means that like they're judging me based off like the answers I give, which is kind of okay. And tricky is like weird, it's just bad interviewers. These are people who have no idea what they're doing. It's probably like their first interview. Like they're very nervous. They're very nervous. They have no idea like what's happening, and you have to like literally break it down and like, explain it to them. And then at the very end, because they're they're it's their first time interviewing, that like you know they'll give you they won't give you like the best or they might give you bad feedback or something. So like leak code you know helps. Like if I'm given a problem, I can solve it like you know kind of within these constraints because the problems aren't that hard. But this, this, the, it's like this roadmap, essentially. I've got like these, these five archetypes that I'm like trying to like battle against or trying to like learn and practice so that I can actually succeed. I think once I, once I clear this, then things become easy or maybe I, maybe I just have to get lucky. I don't know, but yeah. So yeah. So we'll just go over very briefly, like just like a thousand or just like some things I learned from like a problem. So like one I want to cover is there's like a lot of really, really difficult problems. And I don't think mo most people don't even realize this. Um, and I didn't even realize it at the time, but there's like some really hard problems. And like most people think that like, oh, you clear an interview and like, that's it. But like the bar can really increase and increase, which will probably just be like more and more hours devoted. But um, chat GPT isn't going to really like save or get out of it. But um, I could give examples, but I think like you could have like something that's like number of islands, but you can make like really like twisty like variations of it. And you kind of end up with like really, really difficult things. Um, and then two, I think it's pretty clear at least to me that most people just aren't disciplined enough to actually do like this stuff at like a high level most people don't have that discipline or like the interest in it and i think that's like, that's like directly why they don't get or pass like their technical interviews which is kind of unfortunate i guess for them but it's good for us because because they don't have the discipline then it becomes really easy to kind of weed them out and then like you the people who have the discipline are the ones who profit um a lot of patterns become second nature so having like having done like a thousand problems like there's a lot of patterns where like like binary search for example like that's an algorithm that most people would say oh well that's actually pretty hard to like code out or whatever like and have it good but like it's second nature like you already know when you've written it like so many times it becomes easy like dfs bfs and all that stuff that like they'll test you this stuff on interviews but like because it's second nature you can write it in like two minutes and you can write it without any bugs. Um, there's like a, it's like a, there's like a little memorized like template in your head for it and you just can kind of read off of it but like even deeper than that it's like innate I guess, like just from pure memory. Um, you guys will probably see me do this on stream. If you ever actually watch my streams, you'll see me like just type out, I guess, an algorithm like pretty quickly. Um, so this, and this applies to for loop, applies to like looking through hash maps or things like that. Uh, I think also apparently you get better at debugging, but I haven't noticed that because I guess I've given up on on projects. So maybe we'll get back into projects. Um, get faster at reading and understanding problems. So yeah, doing that, you you kind of see patterns within them. And so now you can just kind of like delete information that's just not useful at all. I, I see algorithms in real life. So these are things that happen to me. I see algorithms like kind of in real life. So like if it's like a train station, um, I can kind of like map that onto several different train problems I've seen, or even even seeing that, like I see the underlying, the underlying problems and things a lot more. Like there's like the surface level problem. And then there's like the underlying one. So it's like, how do we get from point A to point B? But it's also, what is that really? So anyways, that's my thoughts. Um, what I've gotten after about a thousand problems. This is all the things I've learned, you know, throughout this journey. I'm sure there's going to be probably some more stuff, but all right. I'll, uh, I think I'll see you guys. I don't have anything else really.